In this video, I'll discuss something that could make the colors in your images appear wrong, color space. I'll address what color space is and then show you the specific places in Photoshop and Lightroom where you need to be aware of color space settings. If you're new to infrared photography, I have a free ebook titled Getting Started with Your Converted Infrared or Full Spectrum Camera. Check it out, the link is in the description. Color spaces are important since using a color space at the wrong time in your workflow can dramatically change the colors of your image. Here is a 590 nanometer infrared image using three different color spaces. Some color spaces are best for editing your image. Some color spaces are best for outputting your image. It's important to know which is which. A color space defines a collection of colors. Here's a graph showing the hues visible to the human eye. Color spaces are actually three-dimensional, but this is much easier to visualize. Infrared photographers may notice the blue numbers around the edge of the space showing the wavelength in nanometers. We'll focus on RGB color spaces. There are other color spaces, such as CMYK, used in printing. In RGB color spaces, each color can be defined by a red value, a green value, and a blue value. Plotting a red, green, and blue value selects a color within the color space. The spot in the center is the white point of the color space. Each color space is limited in the range of colors it can display. We'll cover the four RGB color spaces used by both Lightroom and Photoshop, sRGB, Display P3, Adobe RGB, and ProPhoto RGB. sRGB was created for the internet by HP and Microsoft. sRGB is the default color space used by monitors, consumer printers, and low-end digital cameras. It's the smallest of the color spaces we'll cover. sRGB is a good output format for the web, social media, and consumer printing. P3 is a color space used for digital movie projection. Display P3 was created by Apple and is growing in popularity in higher-end computer monitors. Display P3 has a larger number of colors than sRGB and is similar to Adobe RGB. Adobe RGB, as you may have guessed, was created by Adobe. It was designed to support most of the colors used by CMYK printers. It supports more colors than sRGB, specifically cyan green hues near the top of the triangle. It's similar to Display P3 with slightly different coverage. Some of the commercial printers that I've made prints with use Adobe RGB. ProPhoto RGB was created by Kodak. It supports more colors than any of the previous color spaces. Its large gamut is designed for photography. ProPhoto RGB offers the highest quality for editing your images. When working in ProPhoto RGB, be sure to use 16-bit color depth, as 8-bit can cause posterization effects. We'll cover that later in Photoshop and Lightroom. An interesting quirk of this color space is that some of the points in the space represent imaginary colors that do not exist and are not visible, but that has no impact on your images. Let's review how to use color spaces in Photoshop. First, we'll start with Preferences. So we'll go to Edit and Preferences and I'm going to start in file handling. And the first thing that we want to do under file handling is go to camera raw preferences. This will open up another preference window. And from here, we want to go to workflow. Under workflow, we can see the color space that opens up in camera raw by default. We have a choice. The default is pro photo RGB, and we can select from a variety of other choices as well. You can see Adobe RGB and sRGB, but we're going to stick with the default of Pro Photo RGB because when we're importing an image into uh, Photoshop with Camera Raw, we want it to be brought in with the largest color space. And with uh, bit depth, we have a choice of 16 or 8 bit, and we're going to stick with 16. So that's what we need to do to set up our preferences. So hit OK. The next thing we want to take a look at is creating a new document. So we'll go to File and New. Now, most of the time when you're working with photos, you're going to be importing raw images into Camera Raw, and then you will define the color space based on the settings we just set. But sometimes if you're doing a composite or something else that involves a new document where you're bringing from multiple sources, you'll want to set your color space. So here on the right-hand side, down at the bottom, there's an option. Well, first of all, there's a color mode where you can choose RGB or 
CMYK. So a variety of different types of color spaces. We're going to stick with the RGB color spaces. And then down under color profile, we'll want to select the color profile we want. So in this case, I would also recommend using photo RGB for anything that involves compositing or documents with existing photos that are going to be in pro photo RGB. Obviously, if you have different sources, then you can choose a color color profile based on that. And of course, be sure to select 16 bit or greater in terms of your bit depth. Okay, so now let's look at some of the color settings that we have available once we have an image open within Photoshop. So if we go to the edit menu and go down to the bottom, we're going to see three options here. We're going to see color settings, assign profile, and convert profile. So color settings, let's take a look at that first. These are sort of the default, sort of like preferences where we can look at the default settings. So one of the things that you'll notice here is under working spaces, the default RGB profile is sRGB. And so you may want to consider changing this to pro photo RGB. This is only going to have an impact if you're creating a new document and sort of what the default is. You, we've already seen that either through camera raw bringing an image, you can control it there or through a new document, you can control it there, but you may wish to set a default here under the working spaces. So select that and select OK. The next option under the menu is, uh, under the edit menu, is assign profile. Assigning a profile is something that you'll want to do if you feel like you have the wrong profile assigned to a particular image. So for example, in this case, I can see that I have the working profile is Pro Photo RGB, which is correct, but I could change it to a different profile. So if I click this, that would change it to sRGB, or I could change it to Adobe RGB. Usually this goes in the other direction. So if I'm I'm trying to make a correction, fix a incorrectly set profile. So let's say that the working profile was set to sRGB or Adobe RGB, and I wanted to set it to pro photo, then I could come in here and make that change to get the right profile assigned. So that's what you use assign profile for when you have the wrong profile assigned. And then finally, the last option is convert to profile. And this is where you want to start with a a source profile, so in this case, Pro Photo RGB, and you want to switch to a destination profile. Uh, maybe you are preparing to send this to a printer and you need to use a different color space because that's what your printer is asking for. You can select that here. So you can see a ton of them available, any that you've installed for a printer or any other profile. So let's say I want to send this off to a printer and I want to use Adobe RGB. When I do this, the colors won't shift because when I'm converting to a profile, Photoshop will do its best to convert the colors to matching colors in the new profile. And so you'll probably see very little change, unlike when you're assigning different profiles. So this is the way to get to a different profile while retaining the colors that you have, whereas assign profile is a way to switch profiles if you think you have the wrong one assigned. So let's go back into the preferences. So edit and preferences, and this time I'm going to go to export. So in the export section, uh, we have the default settings for doing quick exports. So this is where uh, the quick export option in the menu where you just hit quick export and just you don't get to pick any settings. You get to basically pick them here in the preferences. And there's an option to convert to sRGB. I commonly use quick export for things like exporting a thumbnail or something for some kind of social media. I probably want sRGB because it's going to the web or it's going to social media. So I definitely want that reduced color space because that's optimal. So for quick export format, the default uh, is to convert to sRGB and typically that's what you want. And if you don't want that, then I would just use a full normal export. So let's look at what that looks like. If I go to file and select export, export as, this is where a screen opens up and you get more choices as for what you want to do with your export. Down here under color space, I have two choices. I can either uncheck convert to sRGB. In, in that case, it would preserve specific color space that I was using, or I could explicitly convert it to sRGB. And you see in this case, in converting it, it's going to try to find the best matching colors for the existing image that I had when I go to JPEG. And if I uncheck it, you see I'm going to get a different result. You might use this if you're sending something to a printer. Be aware of the color space you're using, but if you're using this the export as to go to the web or social media, then in most of those cases you're going to want to convert to sRGB. Okay, so that covers all of the uh, areas in Photoshop. In a previous video, I showed you how you could create an enhanced profile for Lightroom that shifts your white balance and swaps your colors all at once. This enhanced profile is created in Camera Raw. 
I've tested the impact of color spaces on this process, and I want to share with you an update to that process. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open up a raw file, an infrared raw file in Camera Raw. I'm going to select uh, an infrared shifting color profile, so in this case, infrared temp negative 100. And now I'm going to go over to the presets section. I can click this little icon here, or I can hit Shift P to go into presets. And now instead of creating a preset with this create preset icon, I'm going to hold down the shift key, which will actually, instead of bringing up create preset, will bring up the create profile dialog. So from here, I can enter a name, put in the group that I want it to be stored in, pick the treatment. I just want the, the profile that I've selected, and then I can load a color lookup table. So here are some of the LUTs that I, that I have available. So I'm going to pick a LUT and then I'll select OK. And now that I've loaded a LUT, we can see that there is a space option below, which is a color space. So if I click that drop down, I have those various color spaces that we talked about, Adobe RGB, Display P3, Photo, and of course, sRGB. What I'd like to do, in the, in the past I just selected sRGB by default, but again that's going to limit the color spaces that I have available once I'm over in Lightroom. And when I'm in Lightroom, I want the broadest color space of possible because the Adobe Lightroom Develop module uses Pro Photo RGB. So that's what I want to use in my enhanced profile. So I'm going to change this to Pro Photo RGB. And now when I save this, then I'm going to get an enhanced profile that has the broadest color space possible. There'll be a link in the description to the blog that shows the updated instructions that follows these steps. Now let's talk about color spaces in Lightroom. Lightroom uses different color spaces depending on which modules you're using. The library, map, book, slideshow, print, and web modules all use Adobe RGB. The develop module, which is where you do your editing, uses Pro Photo RGB with its larger color space. Now, those are preset, you can't really change those, but let's look at some other areas that are impacted by color space. So the first thing I wanna do is go into preferences. So I'll select edit and preferences, and we're going to look at the external editing tab. So this is where I'm going to take an image in uh, Lightroom and I want to send it to a different program. I want to go to Photoshop or I want to go to a third party editor to continue doing some editing, maybe some, some things that aren't available in Lightroom. So in this first section, I have edit in Adobe Photoshop and the color space available is Pro Photo uh, RGB. And of course I have the others available as well, just like we've seen in, in various places. Lightroom recommends 16-bit Pro Photo, the recommended choice for preserving color details. So when I leave Lightroom and go to another program, if I save this as a TIFF to do that, it's going to save it in this color space at 16-bit. I have the best colors that I have available to me as I go to another program. Down below in additional editor, you can see uh, there's a variety of editors selected and you can pick one of those. If those are, have been added to Lightroom themselves, they may pre-select the uh, color space that is the most appropriate for them. If you're not sure, then you might have to check with the, the information for those specific programs to see which color spaces they prefer. I would certainly try Pro Photo. That's going to be your best choice. So Pro Photo 16-bit is going to be the highest quality, but you may find some programs don't support Pro Photo. So maybe you have to switch to, say, um, Adobe RGB for working with some programs. Okay, next let's go over to the Develop module. And again, the Develop module is going to use Pro Photo photo RGB for all of your standard developing, but there's something that you can do to proof what it will look like if you switch to another profile, such as if for printing, and that's with soft proofing. So if I look at the toolbar down here, if you don't see the toolbar, just hit the T key, that'll hide and show the toolbar. There's a soft proofing option, which you can click, or you can hit the S key to bring up soft proofing. Once you do that, in the upper right hand corner, you see new options here, create a proof copy, and then profile, sRGB. What this does is this will show you a preview of what the image will look like using a different profile applied. So for example, if I want to preview what this will look like going to sRGB, or if I want to preview 
Adobe RGB, you can see all of the choices except, of course, Pro Photo because that's where we're already at. So we want to look at previewing different options. I will frequently use this, for example, if I'm sending a photo to uh, a printer, I want to use Adobe RGB, and maybe I want to make sure that the colors still look the same or that with that reduced color space, maybe some of the crazy colors that I've selected are still going to work. They're still going to look the same when I send it to the printer. And then I can use this soft proofing and selecting my color color space it's called profile here, but it's basically a color space to validate that. Also, what I'll frequently do is create a proof copy, which is just a virtual copy, just like a virtual copy in Lightroom. But a proof copy is a virtual copy with a specific color space profile attached to it. So if you're repeatedly sending something off to a printer, then it, you can just keep that virtual copy and that's a way to manage it. So this is really helpful in previewing the images that need to go to a different color space. Typically, you'll use this for printing. You need to be aware of color spaces when you're you're exporting from Lightroom. So if I go under file and export, these are the export options. If I look under file settings, you'll see image format and color space. So for example, if I'm going to social media or the web, then maybe JPEG and sRGB is what I want. You can see all of the other color spaces available. Maybe if I am going to a commercial printer, maybe I want to select Adobe RGB and export in that color space. If I'm going to another program, I want to export out of Lightroom and work in another program. Maybe I'd like to select a TIFF or a PSD. And then at that point, I can validate that I'm using Pro Photo and 16 bit so that I can export in the highest quality available. So all of these choices available to you when you're exporting files from Lightroom as well. Another choice for printing that involves color spaces is in the print module. So if we head over to the print module and go down to print job, you'll see that there's a couple options here. One option is to go to the printer. Uh, so if you have a printer that you want to use, then the color space will be managed by the printer. But if you want to use a JPEG file, let's say you're using the print module to prepare a JPEG to be sent to a third party printer, then you can also, once you've made that selection, there is a profile, again, color space option that's available here. And you can see the usual suspects that you can select from. So maybe I want my printer supports Adobe RGB. I'm going to make that selection. And now when I save my JPEG, the JPEG will be saved with the specific Adobe RGB color space. That is what my printer prefers. This is another way for you to validate that you're using the right color space, especially when you're dealing with printing. In summary, you'll want to use the color space with the most colors in your workflow while editing. This is Pro Photo RGB. You may want to use a smaller color space when outputting your image for printing or sharing on the web, typically Adobe RGB or sRGB. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Do you have any topics related to infrared photography that you'd like to see addressed? Please leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.